So let's talk now moving on to the disease which is known as atherosclerosis. Um, basically how it how it progresses is that the normal um, artery as you can see at the top there has nice smooth slick vascular walls the blood flows through there with uh, an amount of turbulence still but um, in a reasonably sort of smooth sort of a fashion although it's pulsatile um, and then when the disease atherosclerosis starts to occur what happens is that there's this build up of tissue it's it's actually mostly scar tissue I'll cover that soon which starts to occlude or, or invade into the into the inside or the lumen is the, is the technical word for the inside of the artery and that starts to block off the blood flow cause more turbulence cause more problems which then eventually in a very serious case can lead to that particular artery becoming completely blocked off a clot will form and then usually at some point that clot will break off float around in the bloodstream somewhere until it lodges in a small enough artery to block that artery off and cause a problem if that's in a heart that's called a heart attack if that's in your brain it's a form of stroke if it's in your lungs um, that'll cause another sort of problem there as well if it's in a muscle you, you know you could get some muscle damage there um, the process of heart disease though is one of these blockages blocking the artery directly in your heart meaning that your heart tissue dies um, which is obviously not a good thing uh, it's important to understand <coughs> that atherosclerotic lesions these plaques that we're talking about do not occur in the veins they only occur in the high pressure side of the vasculature they only occur in the arteries so that's the first point to keep in mind about causality we have been told for years and years and years that the cause of atherosclerosis or one of the, the root causes of atherosclerosis is cholesterol in the blood and too much cholesterol in the blood now the, the cholesterol level in the veins is going to be roughly the same as the cholesterol level in the arteries it's the same blood it's just returning back to the heart so if that were remotely a sensible argument then atherosclerosis would be occurring in veins as well as in arteries it doesn't so with, there needs to be something else occurring and what that thing is is that you need the pressure of the high pressure side of the vasculature to drive cholesterol into the gap junctions in between the cells and the walls of those arteries in a normal healthy person that's not going to happen so while cholesterol may be involved a certain form of cholesterol specifically may be involved in the disease process it's not a cause of the disease process to sort out the cause of the disease process we need to sort out the thing that's that's initiating the process in the first place and I'll talk to you what that is about uh, what that is very soon here's a sort of more or a less <coughs> simplistic uh, diagram if you like which shows more about the process uh, where it says lumen there at the top left that means the inside of the the artery concerned you can see some red blood cells and some white blood cells which are actually shown as a sort of purpley sky bluey color there and they're moving around uh, and you'll also see some of those friendly yellow um, cholesterol uh, globs those yellow globs in this diagram represent the LDL the low density lipoprotein subfraction and what you can see is that under pressure when there are gaps between the cells that line the inside of the artery those little lipoprotein molecules can get shoved into those gaps okay question one why are there gaps there okay 
Here's the answer. They are caused by dysfunction at the level of those cells inside that particular artery and the most obvious common cause of those problems is systemic inflammation caused by most commonly a poor diet, uh, intemperate habits, um, lack of appropriate exercise and sunlight etc etc etc. Smoking is another big one um, but the single biggest cause of systemic inflammation is a poor diet. Anyhow when that's been happening we are going to get these gaps which are going to be um, caused by this huge amount of inflammation and cellular dysfunction on the on the um, vascular epithelial cells this cholesterol is going to be driven into these gaps and become stuck in there when that occurs over time those LDL particles become oxidized which they wouldn't have done had they been free to move around back through the blood and be delivered back to the liver and be used again. Basically they're kind of rammed in there, they're stuck in there and they go off. Okay, they become oxidized. Then your body recognizes them as an invading protein. They're not your natural protein anymore and so the white cells will jump in there as you can see at number three and they will start to gobble up these um, oxidized LDL particles and then they turn into these things called foam cells which you'll see there at number five and that's where the plaque starts to develop um, the whole area is invaded by new scar tissue uh, to encapsulate and encase that whole problem so that it doesn't become a systemic problem that's why your body's doing it and so you just get this runaway situation where you just get this huge development of scar tissue which then forms a bulge which then blocks off the artery and then we get the blood clots and the, all the problems that we were talking about in the previous slide. Um, probably should have given you a warning about that but there you go. It kind of looks like pizza doesn't it? Uh, it's uh, with too much cheese. That's the uh, inside of the main uh, artery that comes out of the top of your heart that's been uh, split open along its length and opened up so that you can have a look at these damaged areas, uh, these atherosclerotic legions that you can see. Um, yep, so that's kind of how the disease looks and how it manifests itself. So as you can see in one of these areas, if one of these scabby areas breaks off, that blood clot can then move around through that artery and it will work its way to a smaller artery where it will jam in the heart and uh, if that's where it ends up and cause, for example, a heart attack. So let's talk about some atherosclerosis facts and findings. Uh, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, LDLC, is indeed associated with atherosclerosis. Okay, so whenever you've got atherosclerotic lesions, you will find that there's low density lipoprotein present in those lesions and I'll talk to you about how much you'll see there soon but what we're saying is yes it's there however every time there's a forest fire you're gonna find trees but it would be absolutely ridiculous to say that the cause of forest fires is trees wouldn't it that's that's not how things work okay it's important to remember that only when that LDLC can invade the intimate and the media, uh, which is the tissue inside the the lining of the of the arteries, only when that LDL can get jammed in there, when there's gaps in those junctions, that the disease can only progress under those circumstances. If those gap junctions are healthy and tight, those cells are healthy. There's no runaway systemic inflammation going on. Atherosclerosis cannot occur and does not occur, okay? Irrespective of how much cholesterol you have in your blood. Okay, so again, cholesterol is not the cause, okay? Um, and once the cholesterol is jammed in there, it becomes oxidized and only when it is oxidized will it become a problem. Only then will your white blood cells attack it 
only then will that system of inflammation become run away and that scar tissue get laid down and those those lesions develop okay so I hope all of that's fairly clear a lot of people will talk about the fatty plaques the fatty atherosclerotic plaques okay let's be clear about this they are not fatty they are largely fibrous they are largely scar tissue in their makeup. We can cut these legions out of people who have passed away. We can put them under a microscope and we can look at these things. They are fibrous. They are not fatty. It's a ridiculous comment to say they are fatty plaques. It's spin, again, that is put there by people with a vested interest in getting you to believe that fat is a problem and cholesterol is a problem. Okay? We need to understand that the cholesterol content of these plaques is somewhere between 20 and 75 milligrams per gram, which accounts by weight to somewhere between 0.2 and 3 quarters of 1% of the entire atherosclerotic lesion. Okay, this is not a primary constituent of these lesions. It's a very, very small amount of stuff there. Uh, the overall fat contents in the plaques is indeed stunningly low. It's 0.05% by weight. Of the fat that is in these plaques, fully 70 to 85 percent of that fat is monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids, in other words, heart healthy oils. The stuff that we are sold and told is good for us. Okay, around about 15 to 30 percent of the fat is the saturated fat. So let's have a look at that. Uh, yep, basically what I've just been saying that shows you those ratios there as to what's in those um, lesions once they've been dissected out of people who have passed away from atherosclerosis or whatever cause, and and we've been able to work out what's in these lesions. Uh, here's a makeup of some of the fats in there, saturated, monounsaturated and uh, polyunsaturated. Uh, W6 means the omega-6 oils and W3 is the omega-3 oils. Okay, so that's what's in there. So when you, when you hear the term uh, fatty lesions or fatty plaques inside the arteries, nonsense, not fatty, not fatty at all, hardly any fat there whatsoever. Um, artery clogging cholesterol mm, nope nope there's hardly any cholesterol there it's, it's scar tissue mm. uh, artery clogging saturated fat again mm, nope nope that doesn't add up either uh, um, just a slide for for what it's worth have a look there probably uh, pause this at some time and just have a read through some of those if, if you want to work it out now the reason I had the slide in there I was often when I was talking to my students um, I've been a lifelong advocate um, of low carbohydrate, uh, high fat, uh, moderate protein nutrition throughout the lifespan. Uh, and this was just to give them an idea of, of some of the fat profiles and some of the fatty foods so that they could make good choices in terms of that. Um, this is organized in such a way in terms of the makeup of the fatty acids in there that you would read it from top to bottom, the bottom being the best oils that you can choose or fats that you can choose and the top being the absolute worst. So if you read through some of that, some of that might be a shocker to some of you. Um, one of the main reasons for actually avoiding the heart healthy oils, the, the, mon the um, omega-6 oils in particular, is that these have been shown to be very pro-inflammatory. They cause a systemic inflammation. They cause irritation of the cells inside your arteries. That's what causes the gap junctions to open up. That's what allows the cholesterol to get jammed in there. That's what starts the problem. So these are, among other causes, um, the intake of too much carbohydrates, another one that causes massive inflammation, but we'll get to that in other lectures. So anyway, that's, that's why that, that slide was there. Um, have a look in your own time. 